This video is about diagonalizing symmetric matrices. In the video about diagonalizing matrices in general, we saw that if we have a matrix A, that's an n by n matrix, with n distinct real numbers as eigenvalues, then A can be written as a product of matrices P times D times P inverse, where D is an n by n diagonal matrix, and P is an n by n invertible matrix. Writing A in this form is called diagonalizing A. We constructed the diagonal matrix D by stringing together all the eigenvalues of A. And we constructed the invertible matrix P by stringing together eigenvectors for each of these eigenvalues as the column vectors for P. Now suppose we add the condition that A is a symmetric matrix. That means that A transpose is the same as A. We still assume that it has n distinct real eigenvalues. Then A can be written as a product of P times D times P inverse, where D again is an n by n diagonal matrix, and P this time is an n by n orthogonal matrix. We call it an orthogonal matrix is a matrix whose column vectors form an orthonormal set. Recall that an orthogonal matrix is automatically invertible because its inverse is given by its transpose. So by starting with a symmetric matrix, a matrix with a little bit extra structure, then in our diagonalization we get P to be an orthogonal matrix, a matrix with also a little more structure. So how do we know that this is possible? Well, we're going to use pretty much the same construction as we did before. We'll let D be the diagonal matrix whose entries on the diagonal are the eigenvalues of A. Let's call those eigenvalues lambda 1, lambda 2, through lambda n. Now we'll pick an eigenvector for each eigenvalue, and I'll call those v1, v2, through vn. So v1 is an eigenvector for lambda 1, and so on. From the previous video on symmetric matrices and their eigenvalues and eigenvectors, we know that the eigenvectors v1 through vn are all orthogonal to each other. Well, now they might not be orthonormal, though. They might not have length 1, but let's just take w1 to be v1 divided by its length, and w2 to be v2 divided by its length, and so on. Then the w1s through wn's will still be orthogonal, but they'll also have length 1. So they will be an orthonormal set. If you're worried about why they're still orthogonal to each other, just consider, say, W1 dotted with W2. That's V1 just rescaled dotted with V2 rescaled. And if you pull out the scalars, then you just have a real number times v1 dot v2, and since these were already orthogonal, their dot product is zero, and therefore the dot product of w1 and w2 is still zero. So now we're going to take this orthonormal set of vectors, w1 through wn, and we're going to let p be the matrix we get by putting those column vectors together into an n by n matrix. Since we have that A times any of the Wi's is equal to lambda i times Wi, we know that A times the matrix of the Wi's all stuck together is going to be this matrix. But the matrix on the right side is just exactly what we get by taking the matrix with columns W1 through Wn and multiplying it by this diagonal matrix. 
If you think about what happens when you compute each entry of this product, you'll see that this is what you get. So now we have that A times P, because this is our matrix we called P, is equal to P times D, our diagonal matrix, and therefore A is equal to P times D times P inverse by multiplying both sides of this equation by P inverse on the right. So we've diagonalized A, and because we started with a symmetric matrix and just made sure our eigenvectors were rescaled to be length 1, we ended up with an orthogonal matrix for P. So this is what we just proved. If A is an n by n symmetric matrix with n distinct real eigenvalues, then A can be written in this form. D is a diagonal matrix, P is an orthogonal matrix. But in fact, as you might have noticed, we don't actually need to state that these eigenvalues for A are real. Because if A is a symmetric matrix, its eigenvalues are automatically real. So that was kind of a redundant statement there. In addition, it turns out, although I won't prove it here, that we don't even need to know that A has distinct eigenvalues. It could have the same eigenvalue repeated twice or more. Like that, could, that eigenvalue could be a multiple root of the characteristic polynomial. And we would still be able to write A, diagonalize A in this way. Let's finish with an example. Let's orthogonally diagonalize the matrix given here. Orthogonally diagonalize means we write A as P, D, P inverse, where this is a diagonal matrix, and this is an orthogonal matrix. So to do this, we need to start by finding the eigenvalues, since that's what's going to go into our diagonal matrix D. So I'll write down the characteristic polynomial. That determinant works out to this expression, which factors into lambda minus 9 times lambda minus 4. When I set that equal to 0, I see that my eigenvalues are going to be 9 and 4. Next, I'll compute the eigenvectors for each of these eigenvalues. So for lambda 1 equals 9, I'm solving a minus 9i times some vector equals a 0 vector. The matrix A minus 9i is this matrix, which I'll rewrite as an augmented matrix and row reduce as follows. I'll let x2 be a free variable, and I know that 2x1 minus x2 is 0, so x1 is 1 half x2. So I have eigenvectors of the form 1 half x2 x2, or that is x2 times 1 half 1, and so I can use 1 half 1 as an eigenvector, except I want all my eigenvectors to have length 1, so they'll be an orthonormal set. And the length of this eigenvector, I'll call it v1, length of v1 is the square root of 1 half squared plus 1 squared, the square root of 5 fourths, or the square root of 5 over 2. So I need to use v1 over its length which works out to, let's see, 1 half divided by square root of 5 over 2 and 1 divided by square root of 5 over 2. That simplifies to 1 over square root of 5 and 2 over square root of 5. Notice that this rescaled eigenvector is still itself an eigenvector. It's like using this eigenvector where x2 was 1 over square root of 5 over 2. I can find the eigenvectors for the eigenvalue lambda 2 equals 4 similarly. Once again, the length of the eigenvector that I found is not equal to 1. In this case, its length is equal to the square root of 5. So, as before, I just rescale my eigenvector by dividing by its length. Now that I've find, found my eigenvalues, found corresponding eigenvectors, and made them length 1, I'm ready to construct my matrices D and P. The diagonal matrix D will have its diagonal entries from the eigenvalues. And
and the invertible matrix P will have its columns from these length one eigenvectors that we just found. I invite you to check that this matrix P really is an orthogonal matrix and that if you find its inverse, which is just its transpose, and then take P, D, P inverse, you get back to the original matrix A. In this video, we worked out how to diagonalize a symmetric matrix A by putting the eigenvalues of A into the diagonal matrix D and putting eigenvectors of A as the columns of the matrix P. After sure, first making sure to rescale those eigenvectors to have length one. When we do that, we end up with a matrix for P that's not only invertible, but actually orthogonal. 